Welcome home with Barbara Beck, a Good Life 45 original production. Get ready to watch hope happen. Hey everyone, welcome home. I can't tell you how excited I am to have you with us. I'm Barbara Beck and our program today is powerful. World champion water skier Christy Overton Johnson is here to tell her story and you are going to love her heart. She's gone from being a champion for herself, and I mean super successful, Hall of Famer, world champion slalom skier, to caring for and ministering to the oppressed, particularly those in prison. You are in for a special treat. Hey everyone, I'm so glad that you're part of our program today. One of my favorite things to do is talk to people about their lives, about how God has blessed them uniquely, and also people who have a heart for those who are oppressed. How wonderful to be able to, yes, acknowledge them first of all, and to care for them, but then to also get right in there, um, hands and feet on the ground, and to work with people who are in prison. You're gonna so enjoy Christy Overton Johnson today. She is a Hall of Famer, a famous water skier, from years ago, but now she is working for the Lord in such a unique and wonderful way. Welcome, Christy. I'm so I'm excited so to be here. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you. Years and years ago, I met you, right? Mm -hmm. You had come to the studio, but your life has changed a lot since then. A lot. Right? I think last time that I was here, we were really just talking about my water ski yes. career yes. and the water sports outreach that God had led me to start. And little did I know that he was about to send me to prison, yeah. not to stay there, but to visit. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, but yeah, I went and God just opened my eyes to a whole world where I knew that he wanted me to serve. Well, well, that's what's so amazing to me that you had this platform because you are a world world class water skier. You're very famous, I'm sure. Do you still water ski? For fun? Just for fun. Just for My fun. My body's now. waving the white flag right, of that's surrender. Enough. <laughs> enough. I'm not going to hit it anymore. No. Um, but I do want you to talk about that first before we get into the prison ministry so that people can get a feel right. for, if you will, just indulge us for a few minutes and take us back to when you were a little girl and how that mm -hmm. all started. Who are you, Christy Overton Johnson? <laughs> Very complex, according to my husband and my kids. No, what you see is what you get. But I was four years old when my parents took me water skiing for the first time. And was I that in North Carolina? In North Carolina. Because yeah, I hear a little bit a of A little bit accent. of a twang. Yes. I've been in Florida 30 years now okay. because I came to UCF to go to college Good. and to be in the water ski world in Orlando. Okay. But before that, yeah, I grew up in Greenville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And on the Pamlico River, I can still remember it to this day, my being there with my skis tied together and my family telling me when it's time to go, when you're ready to go, you say these words, hit it. Yes. And hit it's the command that a person gives the boat driver signaling that they're ready to take off. And right. little did I know that when I said those words for the first time in 1974, that I would go all over the world and was wow. blessed to be a world champion, a world record holder for 18 years in the sport. I competed Gee. for 35 years. And it's just been amazing to see how God doesn't waste anything. He uses mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And when I grew up, I was also growing up in the church and knew about God. But I say I was like the water skier who knew about the power source. I was connected to the power source uh, I, through my relationship with Jesus Christ or my belief, my faith in Him. And I said, that's like a skier that believes in the boat's power, has picked up the rope, that lifeline, you're connected. But every day I said, hit it to a ski boat. Mm. And I would go off and I would go out where it was uncomfortable and I'd listen to my coaches and I'd put my trust in these skis and yeah. the driver and yeah. the equipment. But when it came to my spiritual walk with God, I didn't say hit it to God. Mm. I had my faith, I had my belief, but I was so afraid to step off the dock because I thought for sure he would take everything that was precious to me, but all he wow. wanted was me to give him my skiing. Right. And when I did that, he took all those trophies and he began to use them for his glory. Mm. And he opened up a door for me to use the lessons to take the message of hit it, which is really this. It's not about perfection, it's not about performance, it's about being willing to say hit it instead of quit it. Mm. 
Wow. It's about being willing to say, hit it yeah. to the right power source yeah. because I skied 35 years, fell every single day, yeah. but became a world champion because I was saying hit it and hit it to the right power source. So about how old were you when you finally gave it all over to Christ? I was in my early 20s. Okay. and well, That was a long time. It was, but what's funny is I, I skied for Ski and Antique Boats and mm -hmm. Mr. Ralph Malone, who just recently passed away, was my spiritual mentor. Mm -hmm. And he would chase me down at water ski tournaments. He always had his track in his pockets Aww. and he would come up and he'd say, Christy, we're going to Singapore next week or France. <laughs> and he would have me sharing my testimony all during that time. Wow. And all I knew was John 3:16 yeah. and Philippians 4:13. Yeah. I knew Jesus had saved me and he'd given me um, gifts and abilities and I could do all things through Christ who gave me strength and I would preach those two verses and share my testimony. Wow. But it wasn't until I went to Word of Life camp to speak to like 500 teenagers that I realized at Shroon Lake, New York, that those kids had something I didn't have and it was called relationship. Hmm. And so I was about 23 years old. I got on my knees, gave my life to Christ. And I said, Lord, I'm going to say hit it to you. I'm mm -hmm. going to trust you. Mm -hmm. And just teach me because I don't, I want to know you more every single day. And that's been my goal every day. Comes in different forms through different yeah. experiences. But I think that's all God's asking for Did us Did it make do. any difference, Christy, in your skiing ability once you made that switch or were you were already persevering? You had this strange will to mm -hmm. excel even without Christ in your mm -hmm. life, right? So was right. there a marked difference or, or, or what was the difference once you gave it all to Christ? I began using the platform okay. for His glory. Okay. It wasn't about me performing okay. for the sake of a trophy anymore or because my identity was really wrapped up in that. It was about learning that my identity was in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and what He had done for me. Mm -hmm. And when I said yes to God and said, hit it to Him, He began to take me on a journey. Mm -hmm teaching me, making me, molding me, but also bringing in me into opportunities that I never would have dreamed of mm -hmm. to be able to share about Him, a power source that will never fail you. Right, right. So tell me, at what point does it go from water skiing and using that as your major platform? Mm -hmm. That's all I've ever known until recently when I started reading about you and this brand new awareness of of serving the oppressed, those right. people who are in prison. Right. And so what, I mean, you know, Christy, a lot of times I'll get into a ministry because I have a personal, I'm, I'm invested in that right. for some reason, because I know somebody or because something has happened in my own life. You didn't go to prison. Mm -hmm. You didn't know anybody in prison. You I just had a speeding ticket. To, you just, <laughs> you had, right. So Good you money. visited prison. Mm -hmm. And what was, do you remember your oh, first visit? Do I remember it? <laughs> Changed my life. It was August 2013. Mm -hmm. And I was there to visit a gentleman named Bill who was a professional boat driver. And Bill had been arrested, was sentenced for 15 years, and had mm -hmm. been a believer who had gone astray. And mm. so he reached out to me in 2013, about seven years into his sentence. And he said, um, they just started pouring his heart out to me. And I asked my husband, I said, I really feel the Lord is leading me to go visit Bill. And wow. my husband's like, wow. if you feel that, you go. Just don't take me with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was kind of his <laughs> motto. So I went and I knew when I was sitting in that waiting room next to a mother who that's what she did every single weekend oh, wow. was drive from Orlando to Miami Federal Prison. And she wow. says, but he's almost out. And I, mm. I was thinking the next week, she's like only two more years. Oh. Two more years that that imagine? mother was driving, and yeah. and I I started looking around at all the little kids, and we're going through the security, and I'm sitting in this reception room, and I'm trying to talk to Bill, but I knew God had something there that was yeah. way bigger than the visit, which with it was a great visit, but He said, "Look around you," and I heard Him so clearly, mm. and I looked around. And he's like, "What do you see?" And I'm like, "I see families." I see broken families mm -hmm. and I heard it so clearly. I want you to take the message of hit it and I want you to take it to these prisoners and I want you to tell them they're not a number to me. They're not yeah. a DOC number, a federal number, that I know the very heads of the hairs on their heads. Yeah. And I want you to tell them that it's not over, that there is a power source like that boat that came back and picked me up and picked me up throughout my water ski career. will come and pick them up, but they need to know that there is hope. And so I had been publishing a magazine called Victorious Living. And on the way home from that prison, I said, God, I will go to prison. I don't know how to get in there except break the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know that's not your will. Right. So 
I've gotten ahead of you for so many times because I do have that persevering spirit, which is yeah. a gift, but it's yeah. also a curse. Mm -hmm. And I said, I am not putting myself there. If you want me there, you put me there. Wow. And the wow. next week, the Department of Corrections called me. They had gotten the magazine out of Tallahassee. I don't know how. And they said, we want this in all the prisons in Florida. Wow. Jack Murphy started calling Murph the Surf, Bill yeah. Glass Ministries. We want you as a platform speaker. <laughs> Opportunities galore. That magazine within a couple of months was in 50 some facilities. Now it's in 30 states across the United States. Goodness. And um, over a million lives since 2013 behind bars have been delivered hope. Uh, the hope of Jesus Christ and learned about this Praise power God. source. It's been a crazy ride. <laughs> We're going to talk more about that. Take a breath, relax for a minute, because I want to take a break. And when Christy comes, when we come back, Christy's going to be telling you specifically what she's doing in jail ministry, how she's getting in there, who some of the people are that she's ministering to, and what that looks like from the water skiing to somebody who is championing for the oppressed. We'll be right back. So stay with us. Coming up next... And um, I've met people who have everything the world would say would make you happy that are so bent over and crippled by the yeah. weight of it all. Yeah. And so it's not what you have, it's who you have and the freedom that Jesus Christ can give you. And that's all we're about. You're watching Barbara Beck on Welcome Home, where we share life-changing stories filled with hope. You're watching Barbara Beck on Welcome Home, where we share life-changing stories of hope. Welcome back. So glad that you're here with us. We are talking to Christy Overton Johnson, Hall of Famer in water skiing, world champion. And what is she championing now? She's championing for the oppressed. She has a prison ministry that is going to knock your socks off. Why in the world you ever went from a platform of talking to people about your water skiing? I mean, you had it. You already had a platform, but it certainly wasn't to the oppressed. That was no. so God, right? It, it, and that's why I love it, because I go in there and I know I'm okay because God put me here. Yeah. I didn't put myself here. Yeah. And a what lot does of, it look like, Christy, on a day? I mean, do you do it every day? Do you do it once a week? How often do you do this? So we have a, ma a ministry that's happening right now as we speak because this mm -hmm. magazine is in facilities. And once it's in, the majority of times it doesn't leave and it passes from hands to hands. So, so it's in the magazine. So in the magazine is real stories by real people. It's okay. bringing real hope. Okay. And it is all about, it's not just prison stories. It's about people who whatever is ailing you, yeah. Jesus is the answer. And you're the writer of this magazine? Yes. You so write I'm the, the publisher. I ghostwrite and okay. do the call the content editing. Okay. Um, and we just take, we don't promote organizations. We promote Jesus Christ. Do you know how huge that is for them to have something like that to read? It, it is. That is amazing. And Without it's an very unique. Motive. There's no ulterior motive except uh -uh. to promote Jesus Christ yeah. and not promote him, to connect people to him and yeah. let them know that there like is him. a God that really loves them no matter what. Mm -hmm. And give them hope because a lot of these stories, it was over physically, yeah. spiritually, not mm -hmm. ever spiritually, but physically and emotionally, they were incarcerated or headed to the electric chair, or maybe mm. um, their husband just left them, or maybe their child just died of a heroin overdose mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Um, raising autistic children. We've had so many stories, um, mm -hmm. special needs children mm -hmm. and how God is the strength to that mother. God is the strength to the athlete. God is the strength to the prisoner. God is the strength and Absolutely. the source of power and life for every single person. So where person. do you find your stories? You're just inspired. I listen. Just, I've already oh. found them in your green room. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> They're just, everybody has a story. That's true. And see, the Bible says in Revelation that we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and yes. the word of our testimonies. Yes. And see, mm, Satan wants us so to good. think we have absolutely no story. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. And if you would share your story to a trusted person, you'll realize you're not alone in your story. Yeah. You'll realize the power of yeah. your story to bring real change and hope and life in the right. lives of other people. Right. But um, I think that's why Satan works so hard to keep people silent and make them feel like they are the only one struggling with pornography or a, a mm -hmm. food addiction or drug addiction or an adulterous affair, whatever it is, they're the only one. Mm -hmm. And if they would just open up 
And then you've got other people that could share their story of hope to those people. It's a match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what this is. It's about bringing those stories to people who, um, it's not just for the incarcerated, because we're all incarcerated. That's right. Right, we're Whether in you're behind, Yes, mm -hmm. and Jesus Christ has come to break mm -hmm. the yoke of our slavery mm -hmm. and set us free. And he says, I have set you free. Now walk with your head held high. And I have met the most precious people behind bar, mm -hmm. bars who are walking mm -hmm. free. That's great. And um, I've met people who have everything the world would say would make you happy that are so bent over and crippled by the mm -hmm. weight of it all. Mm -hmm. And so it's not what you have, it's who you have and the freedom that Jesus Christ can give you. And that's all we're about. But what's really cool is when this magazine goes in, if inmates choose to write to us, they're connected to a correspondence oh, ministry. Good. Good. We have thousands and thousands of inmates that are being corresponded with. I write devotions every quarter, so they're getting discipleship. And once they get out, we're their victorious living family. Mm. Then they're able to contact us and get connected good. with national partners, because we're yeah. all over, yeah. with national partners that can help them with reentry programs. Good. And so we're just really excited. Just got back last night from Boston, being the American Correctionals Association Convention. <laughs> Next to me in the booth are bulletproof vests instead of water ski vests. I had to, <laughs> instead of fans, there was protesters. I was like, I am in a totally different world. Like right. the last time I went into the pen up at Coleman, everybody had a stab-proof vest but me. I'm like, can y'all weave that in my, my jacket? That is but amazing. It's just, but it's just amazing because I get to see what hope will do. Yeah. And we set in some classes for suicide prevention because it's huge, so much suicide in prison because yeah. there's no hope. Yeah. And the only thing that was missing in a lot of those meetings was the real answer that the antidote to that is hope. Mm -hmm. People have mm -hmm. hope. They want to live. And mm -hmm. hope's name is Jesus. So right. we get to bring that. I also get to go in and speak across the country in prisons, churches, corporations. And I've even been able to take my boat in. Really? And stand on the platform. You talk about yeah. a different thing, but that yeah. out there on the yard. Yeah. And thousand inmates surrounding have come out to see the crazy lady with the USA jacket yeah. that's, that's yelling, hit it. Are you ready to hit it? And they're thinking about all sorts of things oh, except yeah. for, yeah. but it, it just brings them in. And then I talk about them saying, hit it to something that'll never fail it. The power source of Jesus Christ and God and the Holy see, Spirit. Do you see you doing this for the rest of your life? I do. Yeah. I just, I didn't thrive on it. I mean, I, I can't even imagine, Christy, I so admire you for doing this, but just, uh, you know, a white woman who already had a great ministry going and you have placed yourself, I know it was Jesus who did it, but you've placed yourself in a, a, a really kind of a difficult position in a lot of ways. You know, you, you don't exactly look like the modern day prisoner that's out there. You haven't really had all the experiences they've had and yet they receive you. I'm assuming yes. they receive you well because you're giving them them or presenting them yes. with the greatest gift and there's they could an anointing ever have. for it. And yes. just the fact that I go in, yeah. um, but I've had that. I have people ask me, do you go into men's facilities? I, I love the men's facilities. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, they just come to listen to you because, you know, they haven't seen a female. That's, yeah. That might be their, their motive when they get there. But I tell you what, my husband went with me into one facility and it was a, one of the harshest facilities I've been in. And mm. it was a little uncomfortable at the beginning, but once started sharing that message yeah. and the hope, and yeah. you're looking at men with completely covered in tattoos with teardrops tattooed mm -hmm. down their face, and you're watching actual tears mm. flow down. And then they were lined up thanking my husband for allowing me to come in. They weren't Googling anymore. They weren't yeah. making off color comments. They were crying and thanking him for the message of hope. Mm -hmm. And so to see the connection that God gives me to the African-American community, mm -hmm. the Hispanic community, mm -hmm. we've started putting <laughs> um, Spanish articles in there and our goal is to have Good. a complete Good. Spanish edition uh -huh. because there's such a large Hispanic population. And some of our writers on our correspondence team um, do, are Hispanic. Yeah. And yeah. so we're able to correspond with them. And what's so cool is that anyone can get this magazine on either side of prison walls. Mm -hmm. It's free for inmates. But Good. when people Good. subscribe to it, they get one and they give one. Yeah. 
and they're enabling us to give us the opportunity to send that to the thousands of inmates wow. that are on our list. Do you ever think about comparing the scope of your ministry as a water skier and all of the times that you went out and you spoke to groups of kids, probably went to schools and high schools, you spoke to those kids and then God places you over in this ministry, this jail ministry for the oppressed and just trying to think about how when you're speaking to the oppressed, they're down and out. Mm -hmm. They have no hope except hope in Jesus Christ. This other group of school kids, you know, they've heard the gospel before. They've, I just wonder if you have seen a profound difference in your effectiveness as a minister to the oppressed yes. versus the other. Even um, a difference going in and sharing the word of God there as yeah. opposed to sharing the word of God in a traditional church. Yeah. And yeah. the hunger is there and the knowledge of the word of God Mm -hmm. is there. I mean, I'm sharing wow. scripture <laughs> and they're all in unison sharing the scripture. Yeah. And, um, you know, my prayer is that once they walk out those doors, that churches will come alongside them mm -hmm. and help them walk it mm -hmm. out. Um, and that's a big problem. When they get out, they, there are no jobs. Mm -hmm. There are right. no opportunities. You have that felony box, yep. you're done. Right. I mean, it's very difficult you're never done for God. God, mm -hmm. God can make all things happen, mm -hmm. but people go to church and the church doesn't know right. how to embrace right. people with maybe a, a past that they don't understand. And, and so we have to love just like Jesus would love. Mm -hmm. And it has just been my greatest privilege. And Jesus says, if you do it unto the least of these, right. you're doing it unto me. And if mm -hmm. you don't, you're not doing right. it unto him. In one verse, two or three verses, actually, in a, in a, in a um, passage in Proverbs talks about speaking up for the oppressed. Mm -hmm. That's our job, to defend the rights right. of the poor and the needy. And we're not really doing that as the church. We're not doing a great job. And I, and I was so, uh, we had recently, Desmond Mead came on and spoke about the, the great amendment that was passed in Florida to allow uh, returning citizens or felons to mm -hmm. have the right to, right. former felons to have the right to vote. And, and yet there were some roadblocks to that, which mm -hmm. you probably know. But Desmond's attitude was, Barbara, love won because we voted for it. Five million people voted to have that amendment passed. And I so voted. there is something, <laughs> yes, there is something in us, especially in the Christian community that does want to champion for the oppressed, mm -hmm. for the poor, the needy, the destitute, the marginalized. And you're doing it on a daily basis. And, and, and I, I never did understand exactly how often you're going into the prisons. As much as I can. Okay. So it's but usually regularly. several times a month because I travel to different places. Okay. And like I said, the magazine, the correspondence is, is daily flowing in there. That is, yeah, I know the magazine is so. huge and it's having an impact mm -hmm. globally probably, right? Not just in the United States. Has it's just it the United States right now, but we were at the Boston conference talking with, with other Getting nations and to be able to go digitally onto tablets, which by the end of the year, 100,000 plus more inmates will have mm. access to it. So that mm. just thrills my soul. So where is this ministry headed? In Claremont, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we are. And our team is pretty much locally based. And we just love it and have just the best time ministering hope to people all over the world. What would be your final, we only have about a minute left, Christy, but what would you say to our viewers today who are maybe being impacted by your message to champion for the oppressed or something that would encourage those, somebody that has an inmate for a, a friend or a husband mm -hmm. or a, a child, what, what would you say to our audience today? I would just say it doesn't take a lot to make a big difference in mm. someone's life. Mm -hmm. People need to know that people care. So um, visiting people, writing letters is huge. Yeah. Um, but not even in prison. There are people all around us oppressed. I mean, right. you can walk down by Lake, e Lake Eola yeah. and different things and homeless yeah. people in different places and just sit, talk to somebody. Let people know they're, they're not a number or they're, yeah. they're not just Good. someone on the street. Tell them your name, find mm -hmm. out their name, find out their story. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have, you know, their contagious diseases when you walk by, just right. sit down, they're That's human so beings. That's so, so good. And you can make a difference, just smiling at someone, stopping and talking and giving someone the time of day. What a great message. You are so precious. Thank you, Christy Overton Thank Johnson, you. Precious for too. being here with <laughs> us today and for encouraging us, champion the oppressed, find a way to do like what Christy said, to just love on someone. It may be someone in prison, it may be your next door neighbor, but we are all about making sure that uh, people see the message of Jesus Christ through our lives. And I know you saw it in Christy Overton Johnson today.
You just watched Welcome Home with Barbara Beck, a Good Life 45 original production. That makes you a part of our hope team here on Good Life 45, where hope happens.